morning, and I want to introduce the folks that are going to be here with us. Hi, Troy. I'm Shannon Burke. I'm the CEO of Engage to Learn. And I'm going to pass this mic and let everyone introduce themselves. It's going to be part of the presentation. Good morning. Juan Cabrera, Superintendent of El Paso ISD. Elizabeth Science, Deputy Superintendent for Academic and School Leadership, El Paso ISD. Good morning. I'm Kimmy Green. I'm a culture design strategist for Engage to Learn. So we're going to basically be telling the story of El Paso ISD over the past few years and what really the vision of the superintendent and the board, the leadership of the district, what that's been about. I um, also want to recognize Jose Lopez is here with El Paso ISD, Chief of Staff. So thank you all for joining us this morning. The topic of this is coaching for future ready with high performance cultures. How many of you are trying to create future ready? Students in your district, raise your hand, right? So this has been the vision of this district and they've done a great job of putting this in place. And um, that's what we're gonna talk about this morning. So I'm gonna uh, pass it to Superintendent Cabrera and he's gonna tell you a little bit of the story and the vision and the background of this process. Good morning, yeah, okay. So I'm sure a lot of you know about El Paso ISD and our unfortunate past, most recently. I joined in 2013 and I met Shannon here in 2015, actually October of 2015, I met her at Tassatasby. So it's always good to partner with, with a good vendor. And the vision we had was we were a drill and kill district and we focused really primarily on the test. So we wanted to create a culture that was engaging. We wanted to make sure the kids left there with a desire to want to keep learning and enjoy their experience. I know that's different than a lot of folks approach it. So I cast that vision to her and we started, started dreaming about a culture where we could create what we call active learning, active engaged learning classrooms, where kids are actually involved and engaged in the learning. I don't think it had ever been done on this scale. We might every teacher be trained to learn how to go from a lecture format, still a standards-based education, obviously we're still accountable to the state for our star results and EOCs, but we wanted to try to create an engaging, uh, hopefully, environment across the entire district. In addition to this, we added specific project-based learning schools with the New Tech Network. So we've got the New Tech Network, nine of those schools, and then we've got Engage to Learn with Active Learning Framework across the district, and we're also doing dual language across the district. So we think Active Engaged Learning is the perfect pedagogy for a two-way dual language program as well. So we have a lot going on with that, and our results now, five years later, have been phenomenal. So we're really excited about that. I'll let Shannon Taylor learn more about it. So I, I love that the district has understood, and, and when we first met, um, what Superintendent Cabrera told me was, he said, we've, done, we've started a lot of things, but we want to make sure that the learner experience for every learner in every classroom, regardless of zip code, they're getting that experience that's going to prepare them for the future. And to do that, we know we need to support our teachers in changing practice. So they had gone through a strategic planning process, EPISD 2020, and they had identified these student learning goals for critical knowledge of creative thinkers, important problem solving, effective bilingual communicators, responsible leaders, and social and emotionally intelligent um, individuals. And so those were the kinds of things they were trying to figure out, what are we going to do with this? And that's where the active learning priority came from. How do we change that? So I know when I was in a superintendent, an assistant superintendent in the district, um, I would walk in our classrooms, and what we had as a vision, when I walked in the classrooms, guess what I saw? Not the same thing, right? How many of you have walked in your classrooms and you see kids, you know, bored, you see, so we've done professional learning. And so, so that was the idea, is like not just putting it on this great poster, but saying like how do we actually make it happen in the classroom so that's what kids are getting every day. And so that was where we kind of started with that. So, so what we did was, and, and Dr. Science, you can come and speak to this if you want to, but what we did was we said, instead of just saying, hey, we want it to be active for all teachers in all classrooms, let's make it more specific. How can we make this more specific? So we ended up with about 25 or 30 folks, right, and from the district, different folks from different departments, and even including technology, including um, uh, facilities was in there, finance, like everybody, and in a room, and we designed this, this active learning framework. And so they ended up with a framework that would show different folks in the district exactly what they were talking about when they were defining active learning. 
And for this particular framework, it also has protocols so learners and educators can see um, exactly what that means every day. So it's not just saying we want to do this, but it's actually giving them it's actually giving them protocols that tell them here's here's how you're going through this experience every single day. So you can see the steps: design, explore, refine, and demonstrate. Lucy, you want to come talk about this? Good morning. So our teachers have um, this framework, and so we're rolling it out in cohorts. And so the first year was really a uh, volunteer. So we had. Uh, several teachers that volunteered, and again, you know, it was all over the district, so we, it was a rough implementation. We learned from our experience, and what we did the second year is we asked for feeder areas, so we went by feeder pattern, worked a whole lot better, and uh, again, the big thing was having the principals buy into it, because as a volunteer, we had a lot of the principals that you know, maybe have three or five teachers on their campuses, and they really were like, well, they're doing that. Uh, this, the, the implementation that followed the, the next year was really about uh, leadership, and so I think that made a big difference. Yes. So year one, uh, we called it the Platinum Cohort, and so we had uh, 750 volunteer teachers all over the district. So it was, you know, a nightmare to have our coaches go out to every single campus when there were three teachers at this campus, two teachers at that one. So that uh, first year was 68 campuses with 750 teachers. Year two was a diamond cohort, and we have 20 campuses with 1,000 teachers, but it was actually a lot a lot better implementation. So we had, uh, we added a principal supervisor academy because we realized that not only do the principals have to buy into it, it has to come from central office. So that was uh, year two. We are currently in uh, year three, the gold cohort, <clears throat> and we have about 840 teachers, and what we're doing over time is really taking ownership of it. So we're building capacity internally, so they're going to be out of a job eventually because they're training us to take care of the training um, and to do our own coaching. So that's currently where we are with 18 campuses, and we have about 840 teachers, and there are two feeder areas that we're focusing on. Next year will be the silver cohort, and then um, year five will be the bronze cohort. So by that time, we should have everybody trained on the active learning framework. So we're using, um, like Liz was talking about, what we call a responsible rollout. So and unlike a lot of times when you bring a program in and you go, okay, let's train everybody on it, now everybody's doing it, right? That's when you walk in classrooms and you don't see it, right? You did, okay, we did the three days of training, now everybody should be doing this in the whole district. Instead, this is a responsible rollout, um, like Liz was talking about, in cohorts, and learn the lesson of going from volunteers to going to feeder patterns. Um, but a very, I mean, in the, in the district, the leadership is supporting, we're really going to support teachers in changing practice through not just training, but in these cohorts, job embedded coaching. So every single year, all these cohorts that we're talking about are getting three days of training in the summer, and then they get seven individualized, one-on-one, -on -one job embedded coaching sessions throughout the year. So it's about four in the fall and three in the spring that they can have a coach come meet with them one-on-one -on -one and work with them during their planning time to get coaching. And I think this is really important. My friend, Dr. Olivares, always says you got to go slow to go fast, but I wanted to go fast to go fast, which is not good, so she, she told me to slow down. It's actually been a lot better because now I can see it four years later, it's really making a difference but it's because we took the volunteers, we've taken our time, and we don't want it just to be a program that goes away. We want to completely change the experience for our kids in their classrooms, especially our kids in poverty. We know what we do, and it's intuitively, we just, we take our kids in poverty and we want to drill and kill them to catch them up. But they don't get rich experiences in the classroom like some of our, our, our kids that are GT and whatnot. So, this is also an opportunity to make sure every child in the classroom, irrespective of where they come from, what their home life is, and what, what education you know they've got at home, we want them to have rich learning experiences. And, and so far, it's been really, really phenomenal. We're going to keep pushing hard at this. So, once really speaking to some of the results. So, some of the results so far that have been fantastic, and Liz was talking about the sustainability, he was too. Like, this, this shows basically how we're kind of phasing ourselves out and the district is phasing it so while we're doing the training and coaching we're also doing TOT so they're starting to do training we did side by side last year 
and then this next year they'll start taking the lead on training and we'll be there to support and then the next year they'll take over same with coaching we have a coaches academy happening at the same time so while we're coaching they're also shadowing and then they're taking over coaching and doing turnaround coaching so that's moving um, over time um, into that capacity this is just some numbers about that and um, we know that coaching is really what's making a difference but they're really getting some amazing results. And um, Juan was just talking about the fact that, you know, it's not just about scores, although it has been about scores. So it's it's crazy, and I, I like to say this, and we agree on this, that you don't have to choose either what's right for kids and doing something innovative or getting your scores up, right? People think you have to choose between innovation and achievement. And it's like, well, if we want to be innovative, if we want to do the right thing for kids, our scores might suffer, right? Like, that's how people think. But I'm an educator. I'm going to do the right thing for kids. No, we, we did that differently. We said, no, we're not going to. We're going to do the right thing for kids and get the scores up at the same time. How are we doing that? And we're doing that through these best practices that are tied to the learning framework. So that active learning framework has best practices that are, that are embedded in that. And these are the badges that teachers have earned in El Paso ISD over time on these best practices. So you have 6,695 um, GIs, growth indicators, that have been earned through for assessment and formative feedback by teachers in the district. So this is the coaching is very structured. It's aligned to best practices. It's not just, hey, let's have a conversation. Hey, what do you think you need to do next time, right? It's very structured around the best practices that are aligned to TTES and TPES. And so that coaching is aligned with all of that, so they're getting these best practices. So what's happening with the kids, right? So this is for educator growth. What's happening with the kids? Um, the kids are seeing amazing growth as well um, through this implementation. So we've seen increases in STAR and EOC um, in the district. As a result, we, um, the district last year, ended up um, being third in the state for distinctions um, with the number of schools there. And this is after, again, and Juan alluded to this, but you know the history of El Paso ISD before he took over. This is a huge turnaround in a very short period of time when you look at where they were and where they've come to. Because it's not just about even these scores, it's also about a huge culture shift that you feel and you see in the district when you're there. We saw amazing gains in Algebra 1 Masters. This says Masters <laughs> on it. So this past year, we really focused in on Algebra 1 through the process, through the active learning. So not only were we going in feeder patterns, but we also went horizontal and looked at Algebra 1 specifically because we wanted to make sure that college indicator, right, like that college readiness indicator, people were ready for that too, kids were. And then we saw these amazing increases in Algebra 1 at the Masters level in these schools. So um, that kind of data is 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 amazing. But also, which we're really proud of, we saw a big difference in the engagement of students, right, not surprisingly. Um, on the student Gallup poll survey, we saw amazing difference. So you're, what you're seeing here is the difference between, as Liz was pointing out, the campuses that are in active learning already and the ones that are not yet. So there's a 20% difference in engagement for the kids in campuses that are doing active learning already versus the ones that are in other campuses. And then if you look at actively disengaged, you see it's a, it's a huge difference in, there's only 10% of the kids in those active learning campuses that are actively disengaged, which is a, a huge difference for the district. Cultural shift, complete culture shift um, in those few years. So that vision um, of the leadership to really make a difference for every learner and make sure they were all getting an active, engaged learning experience every single day in every classroom is really coming true. For them, this is our sort of board goal. So their board goals are aligned to this data that we're getting in, and we're seeing results on that data. So we're very excited about what we're seeing there. Um, in addition, again, it's not just test scores, and it's not just engagement. The district is also measuring those life-ready skills. So those skills that everybody says they want for their future for learners, they're actually measuring those as well, those life-ready skills. So what we're seeing as a result, again, is increase in the critical, knowledgeable, and creative thinkers, the social, emotionally intelligent individuals, and the responsible leaders and um, productive citizens. So they're measuring all of those three different um, measures and being able to report out those um, increases as well. So do you want to say anything else before we start? Happy to take questions. Just again, the, the genesis, I, I lived here in Austin before I moved to my kids were Lake Travis, Eads, I think we did some Austin ISD. And I noticed my kids were, were GT kids, and they had really engaging, fun classrooms. My kids love them. I'm talking about my, my three kids. And when I go to other classrooms, especially in areas of poverty, 
it was no fun. It was just drilling and killing and going through all the standards. And I, and I when I met Shannon, I said, I want every child to get exposed to an engaging classroom. Just like we know attendance is critically important. I mean, if the kids don't show up, they can't learn. We believe engagement is just as important as attendance. If you show up, but you're not engaged, and it's our job to engage, because you know many educators have kind of gotten to the point where it's my job to develop, to, to deliver the, the standards. I got to make sure that I've got the content aligned, and then it's a kid's job to, to take that in and, and, and to be engaged and excited. And we believe it's the educator's role to do that. We have to engage the kids. We have to meet them where they are, and we have to help them get ready for life. And we think that. So what's beautiful about this, we call it the learning behind the learning. Not only is it a standards-based education, but all of the skills, the social and emotional skills, that the kids pick up in an active, collaborative environment, are, you can't even measure what a difference that'll make in the lives of kids. We, we, we can now walk around our campuses, and the way all these kids are confident, engaged, and used to now collaborating with their teacher, they're, they're, we want our teachers to be more facilitators and lecturers. And, and so far, we're really, really happy with the results, and it's, it's making a big difference, not only academically, but just in, in the uh, confidence of our kids. So, so that, that's really, really important. We did do something called a Catalyst Classroom in El Paso this past fall, and it was really fun to see the, the kids in action, and so we thought we'd share that with y'all as well. There's an old adage that says, um, tell me and I'll forget, show me and I'll remember, but involve me and I'll understand. And that's exactly where I think we want our kids to be. We want them to understand so that they take their what they've learned from grade level to the next grade level. I like it because you get to work with other people and you get to help those people when they're, say they're in a lower grade, you can help them get higher and learn more. Active learning is, it's updating teacher practice and it's modernizing the way that teachers and learners interact with each other, that relationship. So getting a visual for people to see it in action is really important. So the support for the teachers comes in the form of coaching. Um, so there's uh, coaches that we are training internally, but in the meantime we have Engage to Learn as our partner and the coaches come in side by side with the teachers and start planning how to move um, that active, engaged learning to become a reality. So it really is a, a way for, for teachers to learn in a very safe environment because these are not appraisers, these are not evaluators, they're actually coaches standing side by side giving them ideas. So we've seen a dramatic improvement in our, within our students and in our school district. And this year we had significant growth within this area. Uh, within our school district and it's due to active learning. For me my goal was always that they took control of their learning because that's a lifelong skill so the framework gave me this really beautiful organizational system. And our teachers are actively engaged in these programs, they're interacting and they're bringing our students from the paper to the activity. By using active learning you have to kind of use your own knowledge and like learn on your own. It builds the confidence because you know what you're doing and you know what you're saying and then that's a very like good life lesson you need to know. They kind of lead themselves where you just almost kind of take yourself out of the situation and you can kind of just manage uh, manage it by simple terms where they're, they're the ones doing the discussion. We wanted our students to know their learning expectations as well as be able to control the journey along the way. I talk for the group and if they, if they want to ask the teacher a question, they tell me first and they go to the teacher. I'm the team leader and I manage this group to make sure everything's under control. Active learning is really changing what's happening in EPISD. It's really exciting to see. Yeah, that overlap is exciting between the IB and you know, the Socratic seminars and then the relationship building along with active learning. I mean, those are all just real nice overlaps. So you're getting, you're getting taught what you need to be taught and how it works best for you. It really shows what we can do. And this goes to the culture throughout the school because it just, I can see more the people and their creativity. Where can you see where they really start understanding it and then they start taking ownership and they're expanding the usage that they're making of the product. And they're always like, you know what? I actually know more. And that's the whole objective. And on the path, they're learning all these skills that they have to learn. And it's not me doing everything. They're doing the learning. It just reinforces what I thought.
education should look like. It's got to be the future of education. That's all there is to it. I don't know if y'all can hear, but the last board member I love, he just said, that's got to be the future of education. That's what it's got to look like. And so um, it's awesome to hear board members and see that they kind of, you know, they're seeing in action what they wanted in terms of a vision. And so that's been exciting too. So one of the things that we learned this fall is it's really good if you have, you know, these things happening in the classroom and you want to continue to bring that support, bring people to see it, right? Bring even internally, bring your parents, from other, you know, bring your principals from other campuses, wherever you're incubating that. Bring those folks in, bring your board members, bring your community leaders, bring those folks in and have them see it in action because sometimes I think people are afraid of what they don't know and that change, what that might be. And so, um, and the ones that are going to, the new cohorts that are going to be implementing, we're bringing those to the campuses on the cohorts that are currently implementing. So they're seeing it in advance of even getting training and understanding a little bit better what they're going to see. So y'all want to come up, any questions? Thank you for being here with us. We really appreciate it. We'll stay after and take questions individually as well. Thank you so much. Now, I was just going to say, we'd like to invite you to come over. Our, our doors are open. We want you to see. I know it was tough to hear some of the students, but when you listen to those kids and they tell you, I don't want to go back to the way it used to be before. I like this learning. Um, it really gives you chills and know that you're doing the right thing. It's not the easiest thing to do. Believe me, we, we have struggled. You know, it's not perfect. But I think overall, we're at that tipping point where we're now starting to see this is the way we're going to do business. And I think it, it really is powerful. So we invite you to come and uh, take a look at us. Thank you.